Hey, how's it going? I want to film this video for you so that by the end of this entire video, right, you will be a complete expert in Facebook advertising. You will know everything that you need to ever know, all the tools and all the strategies that you need to in place from testing to scaling so that you're profitable, right? This is really much about uh, e-commerce. Uh, and if you're running, for example, Shopify, uh, Magento, WooCommerce, right? So by the end of this video, I want you to be able to be very, very proficient at Facebook advertising. I'm going to go in depth with you about every single thing that you need to know about the platform first so that you know exactly the tools that you have uh, at your disposal okay so let me just start off all right okay so um this this like strategy alone purely has uh helped us do uh two hundred thousand uh, dollars per month for one of our clients so as you can see here right okay i didn't uh, screenshot the entire thing but um you can see here right just this month alone this this month is not even finished uh but we do around uh 200k uh purely on this store right okay so let me just go right into the tools all right. Okay. So, um, okay. So this is what I'm going to teach you today. I'm going to teach you how to do interest targeting, the campaign ad set level, uh, and ad level, how to actually launch the ad, the testing phase, uh, the break even ROAS scaling, how to scale your ad spend, how to do vertical scaling. So increase the budget or horizontal scaling. So you are able to, um, maximize the performance, uh, look like audiences retargeting as well as, uh, this is like technical, uh, campaign budget optimization as well as ad set budget optimization. All right. So different, different things that I'll, uh, need to teach you as well. Okay, so how to actually launch the ad? Let me just go in, and every single time I have uh, like a small uh thing that I need to teach you, I'm gonna go into the ads manager as well, so that there's a demo for you to see and you can follow along. Okay, so how do you actually launch an ad? Okay, so for example, I'm in ads manager right now. On the left hand side here, you can see there's a green button. It's called create. Just press create. Okay, and it'll bring you into uh, advertising into the manager right here. Okay, so um, from here, this is the top down. This is when you want to either create a new campaign here or you're using an existing campaign. Okay, you definitely don't want to do switch to quick, quick creation because you want 100% control of your campaign. So first, if you're already using an existing campaign, you can press this, but I'm going to create a new campaign right now. Okay, generally for e-commerce, we want to just run conversion campaigns. We don't care about anything else. So you just press conversion right here. Okay. Uh, afterwards, you just need to name your campaign as well as give it uh, the budget for the campaign. Okay, as, as well as choose campaign budget optimization or not. Okay, in this place, uh, I'm gonna talk about that in the future, uh, like later on in this video as well. But I'm gonna first turn it off first. Okay, I'm just gonna name it uh, conversion test. Okay, and I'm just gonna press continue. Okay, so what that will do is uh, we have done setting up the campaign level. Now we're going to the ad set level. The ad set level is where you are doing your interest targeting and everything. Okay, so um, at the top here you just create or change the name of the ad set, okay? The destination is what is the objective that you want. In this case, for e-commerce, we want them to go to our website, so we press um, website, okay? Um, for this pixel here, this is my um, my agency account. Uh, I don't have the option of purchase, but uh, normally you are able to press choose an event, right? And then you can uh, go and select purchase, okay? So in this case, my one doesn't have purchase and it's, it's red in color, but um, if you're running e-commerce store and you have already some purchases coming in, uh, this will be uh, green in color, okay? Okay, here you don't really have to bother so much. Okay, dynamic creatives and offer don't have to bother so much. Okay, audience, this is where you choose your audience and your interest targeting. Okay, I'm going to show you that later on as well. But basically, this is where you are choosing uh, how to target the audience right here. Okay, here on the right hand side, right, you can see edit, right, you can choose the location of where you want to uh, advertise, the age, the gender, as well as detailed targeting. So, detailed targeting expansion is basically um, basically the interest targeting, and uh, I'll, put, I'll go more into that afterwards as well. Okay, show more options. This is languages, uh, connections, not very important. Okay, uh, placements. Placements is basically where does Facebook put your your ad. So if you want it on Instagram, for example, if you want it on your Instagram story only, right? These are the, the placements. So you can go into manual placement right here, and then you can choose your devices. So uh, these are the platforms you can choose. For example, I don't want Instagram. I just completely block that out, right? Or if I want Instagram, hey guys, uh, a lot of people have been asking me recently, uh, is Facebook advertising dead? Uh, how are we going to survive the Facebook iOS 14 and stuff like that? And how are we still able uh, to you know grow our companies and stuff? So you can see, for example, like this business, right? It's just like on an upward curve. And just because we're consistent throughout, right? We're growing revenues month over month and seeing healthy growth despite uh, Facebook, you know, being an issue and stuff like that, okay? So if you want more information about that and want to enroll into the expert mastery course, uh, feel free to click the link below and check it out for yourself, right? Uh, see whether it's a good fit for you and see whether we can help you or not, okay? Uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. You can click the link below uh, if you're interested. Um, yeah, I'll see you. Then it'll come back, okay? Then you can actually choose exactly uh, which place uh, that you want to advertise in as well. Usually, uh, we'll just let it run on automatic placements. It's recommended, right? Uh, you don't want to really control manual placements, even though uh, some people may say that. The reason why is because Facebook is already very, very smart at the moment. So you just let 
uh, the machine optimized for itself. Okay. And then afterwards, uh, budget and schedule. So budget and schedule, daily budget as well as lifetime budget. So lifetime budget is you are giving Facebook uh, a date where you can put in the budget and then it will spend it based on how it thinks it should be, be how, how it thinks the budget should be spent. Daily budget is every day, obviously. And uh, basically, yep, it's just, for example, $100 per day, $50 per day. Okay. Uh, yep. Okay, on the right hand side here, right, you can see the audience size and the potential reach. So this is uh, the potential, uh, the, the size, basically the size of the audience that you are choosing. Okay, it's not the amount of people you're going to reach, it's the size of, of the thing. So for example, I, I click this off, right? And then I, for example, I want to choose dogs, for example, dogs. Okay, I'm pressing dogs here. Okay, as you can see, right, the audience size changes as well. So there are 100 million people on Facebook uh, in the United States, 18 to 65, who are potentially interested in dogs. And uh, that's my potential reach of the audience. That is not the audience that I'm paying for. Okay, so at this budget right here, $50 per day, uh, this is the expected daily reach. So this is the expected 2.5 to 7.1K, and this is the expected conversions 8 to 24. Okay, so these are definitely very right off because Facebook is um is wrong most of the time. So you don't have to worry about this. It's just giving you an estimate of how big the audience size is. Okay, and then afterwards you press continue. Okay, after you choose everything on the ad set level and on the ad level, this is uh where you actually put in your photo, your creative, uh, your copywriting. So at the top right here, you see ad name. This is the name of the ad so that uh, you can label it. Okay, and then okay, you can see here like the Facebook page is the Facebook page you're going to use then when they advertise. Okay, the Instagram account as well. So when people scroll through their phone, right, they see this exact account and this is the one that you're, that you're using. Okay, on the left hand side here, this is create ad. If you want to use the existing post that is already being live and pushed out, published already, right, you press existing post, right? In this case, I'm going to use create ad. Okay, um, use mockup, I, I, I rarely use it at all. Okay, so uh, you, I, I won't even bother with this. Okay, uh, create ad. Uh, dynamic formats and creative. When using a catalog, deliver the format text and may are likely to resonate with view viewing your ad. Okay, so uh, dynamic uh, formats and creatives, I don't use it very often just because uh, I like a lot more control in what type of creative you're going to put out. Okay, but that's an option for you as well. Uh, carousel is basically the scrolling the scrolling thing. So you there are a few pictures, right, uh, on, the, on the platform. And then once you scroll through the gallery, uh, the person can see the multiple images, right, just like this. This is what a carousel is. Single image or video, uh, quite uh, self-explanatory. Uh, collection is the same thing. So, right, so it's uh, one big image and then a gallery at the bottom with scrolling. Okay, so uh, let me just choose single image or video right here to really um, make things simple right now. Okay, so you can add your media here, create the video or can create a slideshow. Okay, so uh, you can actually create um, custom videos within Facebook nowadays. So you can upload the photos and images first and then you can create uh, custom videos for that, right? You can just add an image, add a video right here, okay? The primary text is basically uh, the main copywriting. So the main uh, the main text, hopefully this uh, comes up right here. Uh, but basically, it's the main copy, the first thing that people see on Facebook, right? On Instagram, it's, it's image first, right? Then uh, below, you can see this primary text. So it's uh, it's very different for different platforms as well. It's more important for Facebook, right? Headline is the, the thing um, the thing that's beside, um, basically, beside the call to action button, right? Uh, description is optional as well. And then uh, destination, website, or Facebook event. You just choose website, okay? And this is very important, like website URL. Website URL is exactly where uh, the person when they click on the ad, right, where does that uh, website go to, right? So this is uh, very, very important because it needs to be consistent and it needs to go to your landing page or your e-commerce store right here, okay? Uh, display link, I don't even touch anymore. Uh, call to action, right? You just literally select anything. But uh, if you're running like e-commerce, you want them to buy now. So um, is it book now? Uh, play game, shop now. So you probably choose shop now for e-commerce, right? Okay, um, edit stories, background colors. So if you know on Instagram stories, right, there's actually a background color and you actually can customize this as well. Uh, languages, um, if you want different languages, different countries, right? And this is very important, okay? So uh, once you set up your Facebook pixel and stuff, right, uh, you need to choose the actual pixel. So in this case, my, my pixels are already here. So that's why it's firing green, right? So you need to ensure that this is selected, okay? Let me go back to the slides. This is how you bas basically launch the ad. Once you're done, right, you actually just press confirm and you just launch. So uh, it's not very, very difficult. Uh, at first, I'm going to go into uh, other things as well. Okay, so how do you do interest targeting? Okay, so just now I was talking about interest targeting on the ad set level. And interest targeting is basically uh, very, very simple. People try to complicate things, but don't, do, don't complicate things. 
actually less is more. Uh, the more simplicity you have your interest targeting, right? Uh, the better it is because you're not confusing your Facebook, uh, the Facebook pixel. Okay, so uh, how I normally do it, I use very broad audiences. So anything that's more than one million uh, one million uh, in size, the reach, right? Uh, the bigger the better. What I mean is anything more than one million as well. I'm very very happy uh, to use it. The reason why is because when you scale your budget in the future, right? Um, your the, the budget is only going to spend up to that reach. So if you only have like, for example, 400,000 people in your ad set, at the ad set level, right? You only can reach 400,000 400, people, right? And they're going to keep uh, seeing the same ad over and over again. So it's going to be less effective. What you want to do is actually increase the audience size so that uh, there are more people you can reach in the future. Okay, so, right? So the bigger, the better. Okay, I also put it as generic. Okay, so I'm going to show you later as well. Uh, and one audience per ad set. Okay, use very obvious, very obvious um, uh, interest. Okay, and uh, don't do flex targeting. So I'm gonna talk about that right now. So as I was saying just now, right, this is the uh, detail targeting section in the ad set, on the ad set level, right? Ad set level, the second one, okay? Go into the detail targeting and for example, dogs, right? You can see dogs, 100 million people, right? That's uh, That fulfills my condition of, okay, it's very broad, um, it's, it's a generic, right? It's generic, um, one audience per ad set, right? So if it was two audiences per ad set, right? I would do like dogs and pets. Okay, so there's two audiences per ad sets. What you not want to normally do is just do one audience per ad set. And the reason why is because you want to isolate exactly what is working and what is not. If it's not working, then obviously, um, I, I don't know whether it's dogs or pets that, that is good or that is bad, right? So I want to just use one uh, interest per ad set at one time so that I don't confuse myself in the future when I make decisions, okay? Obvious ones. What do I mean by obvious ones is that, okay, if I'm if I'm advertising a, a dog collar, for example, I'm just going to use dogs. Like that, that, that's literally all. You, it's not really difficult at all, right? So you just choose dogs here, right? And then uh, this is one ad set. On another ad set, you want to do, okay, come in here, press suggestions. And okay, let's see, dog training, dog food, right? Dog training, very obvious. It's, it's going to be very relevant to dogs and dog owners. Okay, dog training, okay? Okay, it's a 24 million reach, so it's more than 1 million. It's very broad, right? So this is acceptable. Another another one, uh, dog grooming, right? People who are interested in dog grooming uh, definitely are dog owners, right? Otherwise, you won't be interested in dog grooming, okay? And then cancel out dog training as well. And dog grooming, let's see what's the audience set, the, the audience size, 11 million. Right, so that there are tons of people who like dog grooming as well, right? So these are the types of uh, interest targeting that you use. Okay, don't do flex targeting. What is flex targeting? Flex targeting is when you um, go layers in your targeting. So for example, dog grooming. If I narrow the audience here, and then I type in pets. Pets. Okay, this is called a flex. Uh, I'm not sure why where this thing came from, but uh, flex is basically you're you're putting layers into your interest t interest targeting, right? So you're doing multiple things. What I don't like about this situation is the same thing. It's do if if the if the interest is working or it's not working, right? I don't know whether it's dog grooming that is the good one or is it pets. You, do you get what I mean? So you, you, by being able to isolate the variables in the first place, right? You know exactly what is working and what is not. Okay, so that is why I like to do very broad audiences, very big audiences, such as uh, more than one million, so that if you scale that budget right, uh, there's a lot of people um, that you can target in, in in at the same time, right? The the audience won't get fatigued. Okay. Okay. So that's uh, that's the demo for interest targeting. Okay. Let me talk about. What's in a campaign ad set and ad level? Just one more time, just to summarize for you. So I I brought you through the process as well and show you the different um obje objectives and things, right? Uh, on the campaign level, you're just adjusting the budget and the campaign objective. So I chose the purchase objective just now, right? Uh, you can choose uh traffic, uh link clicks, um uh engagement, right? You if you want engagement sort of thing, right? But since we're running e-commerce, right, you always want to choose purchase only, purchase objective. Okay. On the ad set level you're choosing your placements and your targeting. So your placements is where is it uh, being placed? Is it on uh, Instagram? Is it on Facebook, right? Is it on Messenger? And um, in, the targeting is on the ad set level as well, okay? On the ad level, it's your creatives. So you upload your photos, your videos, uh, your copywriting, and that's uh, the, ad set, the ad level as well, okay? And uh, I showed you the demo just now as well. Okay, in the testing phase, okay, what is the testing phase? The testing phase is just the first time you're launching new ads or the first time you're launching ads. And the reason why you need to test things out is because um, you don't decide who, what is profitable. You don't decide what is determined a good and profitable creative. The market will always decide whether your ad is good or not, right? So uh, the reason why we test, right, is because we put out hypotheses, we put out different types of creatives into, into the market. And so that after a while, you get back some data and then we can make decisions on uh, whether to, to kill some campaigns or whether to optimize and scale those campaigns as well. Okay, so uh, this is what I generally do, even for beginners, right? Or even what I do right now, I literally just use three interests. So three interests on the ad set level, 
okay um have three creatives three different creatives per interest so right so for dogs three three creatives okay i run it for three days um run it for 50 to 100 dollars okay and do not look at the do not change anything on the campaign after you have launched the campaign this is very important because um if you change something on the campaign right you don't know whether the data um is is a uh, is um credible or not is reliable or not you need to let it run for a few days uh, so that you can basically make good decisions right the data needs to be statistically significant enough for you to do anything with it all right so you better have some budget put towards it first before you make any decisions to scale or you kill those campaigns does it make sense yeah okay um yeah so that's basically the testing phase okay so after three days uh treat it like treat it like the stock market right um the more you look at the numbers right it doesn't mean the stock is going to go up any further it's the same thing uh, for Facebook ads, right? So just let Facebook do its thing, let it optimize uh, in the meantime, okay? So after the three days, okay, let me show you the diagram for testing phase, right? So for example, on the campaign level, we have campaign one, and we have dogs, pets, uh, golden retriever, for example, right? And then, um, as I said before, three interests, three creatives. So one, two, three, for example, three interests, and then three creatives. So one, two, three, okay? That's how it looks like. Okay, um, break even ROAS. What is break even ROAS? Break even ROAS is um, the ROAS you need to hit to stay profitable. What does ROAS stand for? It, it, uh, it means return on ad spend. Okay, I'm going to show it to you afterwards as well. So, for example, you're selling a $100 product and then uh, the price of the product is $30, right? So, there's a $70 margin that you can play with, right? So, you can spend up to $70, otherwise, you're losing money, right? Makes sense? You, you're producing the product for $30 and $70 is your profit margin, okay? Your break even ROAS is calculated by this a selling price over the profit margin. In this case, uh, this break-even ROAS is 1.42, right? If you're too lazy to actually um, figure it out, <laughs> uh, then I also have this uh, Google sheet for you. It's a ROAS calculator. You actually can get it uh, if you join our group here, facebook.com slash groups slash OXG media. And on the, basically in the notes section, in the unit section, you can get all of these materials as well. So if you're interested, you can uh, click the link in the description below to check it out as well. And you can, you can basically plug it in, right? So for example, um, $130 product, for example. For example, your product price is $50, right? So what's your break-even ROAS? As you can see here, right, on, on the yellow highlighted one, your break-even ROAS is 1.63, right? So that's basically uh, the amount, the, the ROAS you need to hit uh, so that at least you are you are not losing money at all, okay? So it's very, very important to understand your break-even ROAS as well, right? And that's uh, the calculator demo, okay? Um, to, for the break-even ROAS, right? Um, oh, sorry, for the ROAS, where do you find ROAS? Okay, so for example, I'm in my ads manager right now. On the left hand, on the right hand side here, go to columns. Okay, below here, the third, the third selection from from the bottom, press customize columns. Okay, sorry, it's a bit slow. Okay. Okay, so this bar will come up. Okay, on the top side, uh, sorry, at the, at the top right, there is a search bar. Okay, what you do is return on ad spend can you see here purchase ROAS return on ad spend just press total click yes and then if you want to save as preset so that uh, in the future you can have this as well you can save as preset and then afterwards you press apply okay in this case um, I already have my um, my columns set up in place right so my this is my custom column right here it's called uh, ecom okay and um, you can see here right on the right hand side uh, let load Okay, so can you see here, uh, all of my ROAS is being loaded up here already. So you can see purchase ROAS, you can see right here, my um, purchase ROAS, right? So for example, uh, this, in this case, right, um, if the purchase ROAS was 1.42, you can see here, anything that's below 1.42, right, it's not profitable. But in this case, everything is above 1.42, uh, so it's definitely profitable. Okay, does that make sense? Uh, yeah, it's uh, very, very easy. Uh, don't worry about it. Yep. Okay. Anyway, uh, okay, let's continue. Okay, calculator. Okay, scaling phase. So at the end of the day, right, what are you going to do uh, after those three days, right? So after the, the three-day testing period, you go into the scaling phase. The scaling phase is where you take the data from the testing phase and then you make a decision on what to do next, okay? So at the end of the three days, you take um, the, the creative with the highest ROAS, okay? With the, you take the creative with the highest ROAS and you better make sure it's more than that 1.42, make sure it's more than that break-even point and you duplicate that into a different campaign. Okay, so um, to duplicate a campaign, all you do here, literally, for example here, right, you can see on the campaign level, I click, I click this, I select the campaign, it's selected with a tick, I press duplicate, okay? This duplicate comes up, 
and um, okay, loading duplication. Okay, so you want to create a new campaign and then you just press duplicate, and there you go. Very very simple stuff. Uh, nothing nothing very hard. Okay, so that's how you duplicate another campaign. Okay, so after you have duplicated that campaign, right, then you go into vertical scale. So vertical scale is to increase the budget. So previously I said that you want to run fifty to one hundred dollars per day, right? So now you take um uh your ad with the highest ROAS. Okay, so then you vertical scale. So you increase the budget on the new campaign. Okay. So uh, you know for a fact because that campaign, uh, sorry, that, that ad right is doing the best, uh, it deserves higher budget so you can make it more profitable, right? The rest of the two other creatives, right, that are not so profitable, if they're still profitable, right, then perhaps you want to try um, running it as well. But if they're not, then stop running it, okay? Right, and this is what it looks like. Horizontal scale is basically putting many different ad sets, many different ad sets into a single campaign so that one campaign has yeah more than three basically okay so the reason why you go into horizontal scale when you have found something that is working on the testing phase right is so that um there's a breadth of audience there's a larger audience that you can you can play around with and you won't get ad fatigue ad, ad fatigue is basically um if you run an ad many many times to the same audience the person gets very very used to it right and it's not as effective in uh getting someone to click on your ad because it's not as engaging they've seen it multiple times already and uh yeah basically your ad performance goes down your profits go down at the same time okay uh horizontal scaling uh, it's not very difficult uh, but i'll just show you nonetheless it's the same thing so um, for example, on the ad set level, right, uh, you are just duplicating the same campaign and changing changing the interest, right? So for example, here, um, I select like two of them and then I press duplicate. Okay, my computer is slow. I'm so sorry. Right, so I, I do the same thing as the campaign duplication. You just choose the ad set level and then you duplicate it into the same campaign, okay? After you have duplicated it, it right, then you go ahead and change the interest. So how do you change the interest? It's the same thing as before. So you press edit. You see here on on uh, this uh, pen pen item thing, I icon. Yeah, you press edit, right? And then you scroll down. Okay, it's uh it's slow, very very slow. Okay, then uh, it's finally loaded. Okay, then afterwards you go and change, you go and hit, go ahead and change your interest once again, right? So if previously you, um, on the duplicated ad set, right, you are running uh, dogs, then now you want to put in dog whisperer, then you change it to dog whisperer. Okay, that's basically it. Okay, hopefully that's the demo. Okay, let me talk about what is custom and look like audiences. Okay, these are probably the most powerful tools that you have in your arsenal in terms of Facebook ads. This is the reason why Facebook has so much data and why it's so powerful, okay? Custom uh, custom look like, look like audience is basically, for example, uh, I'm Jonathan, right? I like basketball. Um, I like marketing, for example, right? So um, a custom audience will put 100 Jonathans into one bucket right here, into one custom audience, okay? The look alike audience will put, um, will take that 100 Jonathans, right? And find, for example, in the Singapore market, in the United States, uh, millions of other similar looking Jonathans. And that's a look like audience. That's all, right? So this uh, million, uh, a million Jonathans like marketing and basketball at the same time, right? So um, that's a look like audience, basically, okay? It's basically creating a population a mirror of, of uh, a singular population size, something like that. Does that make sense? <laughs> Hopefully that makes sense, okay? So what you want to do here is, um, create a custom audience of your all of your purchases, right? So people who have bought from your store before, from your e-commerce store, then you want to create uh, a custom audience because you know for a fact, right? Those uh, 500 to 1,000 people, um, they are very, very qualified. They are your ideal customer persona and you know that uh, people like um, who have the same characteristics like basketball and like marketing, right? For example, uh, are going to have tendency to buy your pet product at the same time, right? So you definitely want to have a larger sample size Right, so um, I really recommend anything more. If you have more than five hundred purchases, or, or if you have more than a thousand purchases, then you definitely want to go into a uh, lookalike audiences. Okay, and then afterwards you create a lookalike from there as well. I'm gonna show you a demo right now so that you know what the heck I'm talking about, and uh, you won't be so lost. Okay, so let me just exit this out. Sorry. Okay, so um, to actually get to the custom audience uh, lookalike menu, you can press on the top hand, left hand side here. Okay, press this arrow, expand menu. Okay. Um, if I'm not wrong, it's in audiences. Go into advertise, 
and audiences. So you can see here, create custom audiences, look like audiences, blah, blah, blah. Yes. So you just press this and you come into this menu right here. Okay. This menu, you can see on the left hand side, there's a big blue button, create audience. Create your custom audience first. So here. And then you have uh, many, many different options, right? You can, so you can create custom audiences uh, out of people who have uh, watched, for example, 50% of your video, people who have um, visited your Instagram profile and visited your Facebook page as well. Or even if you upload an email list, right? You can uh, uh, you create a lookalike audience from your email list as well. So it's incredibly powerful, okay? So I'm just gonna create a lookalike audience based on my purchase here to give you an example. So you can see here, right? Okay, once you selected your pixel on the top right here, you can press, for example, uh, not all website visitors okay i scroll down for example purchase so do you see here purchase if i go here i see the maximum time is 180 days right so i'm going to just going to put i'm going to create a, a custom audience out of the people who have cut uh, uh, who have purchased in the past 180 days all right and then i will just put um sample for example you can name, name it anything you want honestly um and i'll just put purchase and then 180 days okay and then i'll create the audience Okay, this is going to take a bit of time, so probably around half an hour for Facebook to actually collect all of the data for you. And that's why you see on the uh, here, right, this column, this size, it says populating. Right, You're going to let it uh, populate for a while so that you know that the data is coming in. All right. Um, okay, yes. So afterwards, after you have like populated this thing, right, press the custom audience you have created in the past. Press the left hand side blue icon again and press look like audience. Okay, so in this, you will press and select uh, your basically um, what you have created in the past okay and then so for example here um, let me just choose anything random okay okay and then choose the the audience location that you want for the lookalike audience so for example you're running to, to the to the US just uh, select US okay and then select your audience size so what this is is basically is how qualified your audience is compared uh, to your first sample size. So this thousand Jonathan sample list, right? Um, how much, how big do you want the audience to be? So um, if it was a 10% look like, it's going to be a very, very broad data. There's gonna be a bunch of Jonathans and uh, it's gonna not look a lot like Jonathan. Uh, so um, the smaller you get, the more it looks like Jonathan, make sense? <laughs> Basically, it looks like more of your, your your initial sample size, right? The wider you go, uh, the less relevant uh, the thing is. Okay, then afterwards, you can just press create an audience afterwards, and then you can create an audience, and then uh, it will populate as well. It'll take a, a, a bunch of time as well. And then afterwards, you can go and target these people uh, at the ad set level again, okay, once you're creating your ad, right? So it's it's um it's uh, it's all related, okay? Let me talk about uh, retargeting as well. Retargeting is basically, uh, if a person has done a, a, an action, uh, according to your brand, right? For example, they've visited your website in the past. Uh, they've clicked on the link. They've watched uh, your, your YouTube video, uh, sorry, your, your video on Facebook, for example. You can get in front of them in the future as well. So it's an additional customer touch point. The reason why you do retargeting, right, is because it's much more profitable. The, the guy already like, likes, know and trusts you. So all you're doing is just um, uh, cultivating that, their relationship and say, hey, would you like to buy? Would you like to buy? Okay. So um, these are several factors you can retarget. But basically, I've showed you just now already. Um, the retargeting audience, right, is everything in custom audience right here. So you can retarget based on an email list. So you can upload your email list uh, to Facebook and then they'll match it for you, right? Or they have watched uh, a few of your videos or uh, visited your Instagram page, right? So let me just show you right here, for example, video engagement custom audience, right? Okay, so you press browse. And then you can press, uh, for example, people who have watched 75% of your video. Right, so if for example you had an hour long video and obviously if, if the guy has watched like 75% of that video you know he's extremely qualified he's a he's a very um very qualified potential customer right so you can press confirm right and then uh select how much the look back day so uh, people who have uh, watched 365 days back right and then uh, you can just select um label your name and then you can create your audience right here okay so that is retargeting Okay, that's the demo. Okay, the last thing that I like to say, because I'm losing my voice, um, is campaign budget optimization and ad set budget optimization. Let me show you the visualization of what it is and don't have to worry about the tactics and the strategy because uh, ultimately, even if you use either or, right, um, it doesn't matter. What matters is, is your creative, uh, what is the photo, the video you, that you're actually putting out in there. Okay, so campaign budget optimization. Uh, you've seen this, um, you have just seen this just now as well. So when you when we went to create here, here, right? Okay, give it a sec. All right, so uh, if you remember just now, when we created a new campaign, right? 
uh, for example, we choose conversions. Okay, we choose conversions. And as you can see, if you remember, there's some, something called campaign budget optimization. That is basically the campaign objective that you're choosing. Okay, so you can turn it on, you can turn it off. When it's on off, right, it's basically ad set budget optimization, which is right here. I'm going to explain it later. And um, if it's on, you're choosing CBO. Okay, so it's uh, the option is right here at the campaign level when you're creating your ad. Uh, at the CBO stage, you're basically diversifying, sorry, you're basically um, putting your budget through multiple ad sets. So as you can see here, right, if you spend $100 per day, right, uh, what a CBO does is spread that budget throughout those ad sets. So three ad sets right here, each of them will get $33, okay? Uh, if you are ad set budget optimization, the, the budget is being spread at the ad set level. So each creative, right, you can see here on the ad level, is being spread out here evenly. Okay, so you might be asking why would I use CBO? Why would I use ABO? Um, Facebook announced um, quite recently everything is going to move to CBO in the future. But basically, um, I would think AdSet, we use AdSet for testing. Okay, AdSet budget optimization. Why you use it is because you want to isolate and see which creative is the actual uh, performing creative so that you can quickly isolate which one is the best and then you can kill the rest. Right, so it's more profitable. Right. Whereas campaign budget optim optimization, you're letting Facebook basically optimize which ad set is the best performing one, right? And then uh, let let the, the Facebook machine learning algorithm uh, try to actually uh, decipher which one is the most profitable one, right? So generally, this is what I suggest. Um, when you're on the testing phase, ad set budget optimization, and then when you're on a scaling phase, um, you can actually uh, use CBO, right? Because you already know the creatives are actually all performing very, very well. Right, you've already tested in the past. So all you're doing is just increase the budget and vertical scale is uh, horizontal scale at this point in time. Okay, does it make sense? Yep. Okay, so don't think too much about the strategy. Think about the creative and stuff. Okay, I've come to the end of the video. I hope um, uh, <laughs> you enjoyed it so far. Uh, please uh, do subscribe to my channel if you want to see more and stuff. And uh, if you're